Hello, good morning. How you doing? It's Phil Thatch. I'm out here in the blind and once again I'm working a twin camera setup. Over here I've got my R7 and my 100 to 500 and I've got something a little different this time. I've got my Z50 again but this time I've got it on the old 70 to 200 f2.8 G VR2 and the 1.4 teleconverter. So that gives me 280 millimeters and on my left perch where I've used the Z50 in previous videos I only need about 270 or 280 to fill the frame right there so this gives me uh, 2.8 times 1.4 it gives me a 280 millimeter 200 times 1.4 is 280 and 2.8 times 1.4 is 4 so it gives me a 280 millimeter f4 to work with on my favorite perch and then um, for everything else the quicker focusing and longer range R7 with a 1.6 crop and the 100 to 500 gives me up to 800 millimeters if a bird lands far away and, and I can quickly move amongst the other perches but I've already got one set up and, and focused I might even be able to show you on the screen one set up and focused on my favorite perch ready to rock and roll it's been kind of slow out here so far this morning but I did get I think the first thing I got was a Carolina chickadee that was uh, on the Leland Cypress. Here's the Carolina chickadee and you know we see these out on the back porch all the time but they usually fly up get a seed and go far away but this one sat close by in the Leland Cypress so I could get a shot. I managed to get a photograph of a northern cardinal. This is the first Z50 shot of the video and look at this poor molting bird you know usually I see cardinals looking like this late in the summer, August, maybe even September, but here it is late May, and this one already is molting. And I think I just now got a fairly nice shot of a song sparrow, which I see song sparrows up here all the time, but a lot of times I don't get a picture of them, so that was nice to get a fairly decent shot of the song sparrow. I'm back to the R7 now for this beautiful song sparrow photograph, just a beautiful little bird. And this is another one that we see all the time, but I rarely get a photograph of, so I was happy to get this one. I've been seeing a cardinal that mostly has the coloration of a female, but it has a little bit more red to it than most females do. So it may be a juvenile that's, that's going to be a male when it gets to be an adult. But anyway, I made some photographs of it. Another 500 millimeter shot of this northern cardinal, and look how high its tuft is sticking up on top of its head. I wonder if it was molting before and its feathers are just coming back in. This one I zoomed back to about 451 millimeters for this shot of the beautiful, not sure if it's a male or a female, northern cardinal there in the Leland Cypress. And I got one more shot also with the R7 at 500 millimeters using the 100 to 500 of this beautiful song sparrow. It was in the Leland Cypress as well. I've had to lower a lot of my perches because the squirrels could climb up to the top of them and then leap up and get on my bird feeder. And when they get on the bird feeder that's hanging, they, they've actually destroyed two. Heather bought me one that's completely made out of metal that they haven't torn up yet. But anyway, I've lowered those perches so the squirrel can't jump from them, but they don't land on them as much with them being a little bit lower and closer to the handrail. So I haven't really had many shots or maybe even any shots with the Z50 on the left perch because nothing has landed on it. But uh, I had a, a vertical perch that went up at an angle and I turned it to where it, the, fur, the higher up you go, the further away you are from the feeder instead of the closer. And I got the, um, the male downy woodpecker on that. Only 300 millimeters for this downy woodpecker shot. This is on the perch that pokes up at an angle. I really love this perch, but the woodpecker doesn't land here very often. I was happy to get this shot. Also got a shot, maybe my favorite of the day so far, of a male northern cardinal. And it was on the Leland Cypress in the background, but it was on one of the branches that's really close. And uh, unlike some of the other cardinals that I've seen this morning, this one was a male with perfect plumage. Definitely no problems at all with the plumage on this male northern cardinal. Love this shot, really happy to get it. 500 millimeters, one four hundredth of a second, and ISO 800 to bag this one. Heather worked from home the last couple of days, and her office is just inside there, and she can look out the window and see the bird perches. And she's told me that she's seen a juvenile brown thrasher, and you can tell the juveniles because their eyes aren't bright yellow. They almost have a blue look to them, 
and I've been hoping that that bird would make an appearance this morning, and it did. I got a shot of it in the Leland Cypress. I got some shots of it closer, but they have kind of bird feeder sort of interference, so I probably won't share those, but the one in the Leland Cypress is shareable, I think. I used the R7 at 500 millimeters to bag this shot of the juvenile brown thrasher, and you can see their eyes are much less bright and definitely not yellow yet on a juvenile. Well, female house finches are among my least favorite birds that come to these perches, but I wanted to get a shot using the Z50 and the 70 to 200 2.8 GVR2. And one of them landed not on the perch where I had this camera pre-focused, but on the perch that's just above it and to the left. So I decided to uh, work on a shot with that and I made a shot of the female house finch with the Z50. Really nice creamy bokeh, even though the background is fairly close and it's the Leland Cypress, so it's cluttered using the 70 to 200. Now this is a shot with the 100 to 500 on the R7 and it has a nice smooth background, but that's just grass and it's much further away than the background in the first photograph. The juvenile brown thrasher came back and this time I got a shot of it with the Z50 and the 70 to 200 2.8 with the 1.4 telly. This is an adult brown thrasher from a video a couple of weeks ago. I'm just sharing this so you can see how bright the eyes are in comparison to the immature one, which eyes are very dull by comparison. But I was happy to get this shot with the Z50 and my old 70 to 200 F 2.8 GVR2 that I've had for probably a decade. And here's the second shot. And I also made a photograph of a downy woodpecker up on one of my bird feeder holders. And I decided I wasn't going to share this with you, but I decided to go ahead and share it because it was the only female downy I got today. Heather and I have put some plants out here specifically to attract hummingbirds. One of them is a salvia hot lips, which one of the viewers recommended. And another, uh, Heather picked out a plant called a bee balm. And when we bought it, it had no blooms on it whatsoever, but we planted it and now it's starting to bloom. And a male ruby-throated hummingbird came up and landed on it. And of course, I'm in electronic shutter mode on an Icon Z50, which has a super slow readout. But uh, I made some shots of the hummingbird kind of around that bee balm plant. And I really need to get it up higher because there's railing in the background, which is terrible. I, I didn't think the hummingbirds would be out here, but sure enough, they were. So here is a needs improvement shot of a ruby-throated hummingbird on Heather's bee balm plant. I've made photographs of ruby-throated hummingbirds on flowers in other places, but at home, I usually have them attracted by a bird feeder, but this time they were attracted to the flowers we planted, so mission accomplished. This is my favorite of the two shots, and I want to point out that the rolling shutter distortion is not very bad on the Nikon Z50 and its slow sensor. I'm really enjoying the look of the shots that are coming out of the Z50. It's, it's it's not really the Z50 that's doing it for me. It's the 70 to 200 2.8 with the 1.4 teleconverter. It has a, a really nice shallow depth of field. Just now I got a shot of, I think it's a song sparrow, but it looks a little different than your normal song sparrow. So maybe it's slightly sub-adult, but uh, I'll share that with you as well. This is the first time I've regretted that my RF 70 to 200 2.8 will not take a teleconverter because I really like this 70 to 200 with a 1.4 teleconverter combination on an APS-C camera in the blind. It's working really well, and look at that beautiful bokeh. A Carolina chickadee just came and landed on my high perch. It's a stick, a long stick that I have festooned to the very top of my uh, feeder holder. And uh, it does have a nice background from this side of the blind. And, you know, the Carolina chickadee has a lot of really dark and the background is really dark. Oh, there's one singing even closer now, but it's on wrought iron. Anyhow, to get the exposure right, I had to dial in minus one and a third stops, and there's still just the tiniest, tiniest bit of blinky area in the whites. So I think I got it pretty much perfect. Here's that shot. The 100 to 500 is no slouch for creamy bokeh. Even at 400 millimeters and f6.3, the background looks really nice in this Carolina Wren shot. Now this background's really jumbled, but it's also just inches behind this juvenile European starling that I photographed in the Leland Cypress. I definitely got a tufted titmouse shot, or maybe several tufted titmouse shots. It was landed in the, in the Leland Cypress, 
and it started at the back and it slowly moved closer and would sit for a while and closer and would sit for a while and closer and would sit for a while and finally it came to the feeder and I got shots of it in each of those closer and closer with the R7 and the 100 to 500 and I even made a, a relatively long video clip of it just kind of sitting there waiting to move closer. I ended up just sharing one photograph from all of those perches of the tufted titmouse. Here it is on the closest perch and the video clip was a little bit further away and I'll share that at the very end of the video. And now for a little bonus section, these shots I'm about to show you were not made today but they were made out here on the porch or actually from inside the kitchen just peeking my camera out the door of a bird that I've only seen a few times in my life. This is only the second male rose-breasted grosbeak I've ever seen and it was on a day I was getting ready for work. It's on the left perch, which I was trying to make photos of with the Z50 today, and there it was, and I just cracked the door open just a little bit, just enough to slip the very front of my lens out, and I got this shot and this shot. Actually, I made probably about 100 shots, but these two are by far the best, and I think I shared a, a 4x5 version of this one on my social media, so you may have seen it. But these were made on May the 12th, and all the rest of the shots in this video were made today on May the 25th. So I've been waiting a while patiently to find a spot to share these with you. Okay, that's going to do it for me this morning from the Bird Studio here in the blind. I'm just sitting outside the blind now. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Take a moment and subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see some more. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.